Hello, my name is Lee, and I'd like to welcome you to this video where what we're going to do is take a look at how we can create uh, some sort of quilt or blanket like the one you see here. So, as you can see in this blanket, we have these nice folds and creases, and um, mainly this, this type of modeling or the, the technique we're going to be using today is mostly going to be used in architectural pieces where you don't really have such a big um, scene and um, polygon count is not really an issue. Now, with that in mind, um, if I jump over to the wireframe, you can see that I have lowered the amount of polygons that this would uh, usually have. Um, and we'll also look at that, um, how to do that also. So with that in mind, let's um, jump over to 3ds Max and look at how we can set this up. So I'm going to press the uh, Alt and W key to maximize the perspective viewport. And I'm going to create a box and this is going to serve as the base or the, the bed here. And I'm going to name this um, bed underscore base. And I'm going to create a plane. So I'm going to hold down the left control and left click and drag. And that's going to create a, uh, a plane that is equal on all, all sides. Now that is not particularly important, but it's just something I like to do. I'm going to lower the uh, segments here and I'm going to give this a name and call this floor. Now, before we continue, I'm going to press the M key. I'm going to press Control A to select everything and just going to give this the same material. So we're just going to use this gray type of material here and set this to black. So the wireframe is black and uh, this just really looks much neater and nicer for presentation purposes. So this is the basic setup what we need. So what we want to do is create the blanket. Now, as this will be going inside a game engine, uh, we also want to look at how we can set up the UVs for a mesh uh, that is as complicated as that. So we can um, then go ahead and add things like uh, textures and, and so on and so forth. So with that in mind, let's look at how we can set this up. So I'm going to go to create and I'm going to create a box. I'm going to press the T key so we can go to the top and I'm going to left click and drag something like this. Now for the purposes of this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the, the blanket um, really big so we can get an over exaggerated um, look and feel of our scene. And uh, I created a box, but it looks like it was a little bit too, too thin. Let's try that again. Just click and drag and push this up. There we go. And let's push this all the way up. And let's just lower the, the height here. So we get something like this. Now, when we create uh, a blanket or a, or a quilt or whatever is this is going to be, we need enough detail for this to actually be editable. So I'm going to go to modify and under the length and width segments, we're going to increase the amount of polygons. Now, at this point, um, this is really up to your choice on how accurate you want the simulation to be. The higher the amount of segments, the more realistic this will appear. But I tend to find that uh, when importing this into Unreal and then and then decreasing the polygon count, around 50 to 75 looks pretty good. So I'm going to go around with 75 by 75. I'm going to increase the length segments to two. And then I'm going to right click this and convert this to an Ezreal Poly. Now, the reason I set the length segments to two is because Along this line, I want to split the uh, UVs. So this makes it possible to have a upper texture and a lower texture. So with that being said, let's go and select these um, these uh, vertexes here in the center. So I'm just going to left click and drag and uh, select all of these. And then using the scale tool, I'm going to scale these out a little. This is also going to help selling the overall effect of um, of the, the blanket or, or quilt or wherever else this is going to be. So it just gives it a, a much softer edge also. Now, at this point, we're going to add a unwrap UVW. So let's press the, um, let's bring down the uh, menu here and choose unwrap UVW. So add the UVW modifier to the UVW modifier stack. And from here, let's go to open in editor or open in editor, yeah. And let's select the edge and let's select this edge right here. And let's just check this on both sides. Yep. 
Okay, so select one edge and press the loop. And then we want to select this option here that says, um, that's basically going to convert the edge selection to a seam. And once we've done that, let's select just any random polygon on the top and we're going to select expand selection to edge. And we're going to select the planar option right over here. And then let's just zoom out a little. Okay, let's go back to polygon selection. Let's just move this outside of the, uh, uh, the UV space and let's select the rest of these polygons and do the same thing. Let's go ahead and choose planar and that should be that. Now this one should be flipped. The the uh, the normal sh the normals of the uh, UV should be flipped. So the way to check that is go to select and select inverted polygons. And yes, you can see I'm correct. So we're going to select these and go to tools and we're going to flip these vertically. And then let's select both of these and go to uh, mapping and I'm going to choose pack UVs and the tools relax. I'm going to relax these by uh, polygon angles and choose start relax. And let's just pack these one more time just to make sure there's no overlap. There we go. Now, at this point, you can uh, place these uh, UV clusters wherever you like. Maybe you have some sort of um, uh, UV template or, or something along those lines. Um, and really, this section is up to you where you want to move these around and how you want to lay out your texture. Um, but for the for the purposes of this video, um, we're going to leave it at this. And then we can just add any texture that will be on, on one side. Or we can split this up and uh, have two textures on both sides. So what that basically means is that now we have uh, created those UVs, no matter how we deform this from now on, the, the, those UVs are going to remain the same. So let's look at setting up the rest of the simulation here. So before we do that, let's press the M key and just keep this consistent by using the same material. And let's convert this to an edge poly. So we actually collapse the stack over here. And let's just set this to black. There we go. So. What we need to do now is create a dummy. So I'm going to go to top view. And uh, first of all, let me just place this a little nicer, something like so. And let's do, let's reset this in X and Y. And I'm going to pull this down just a little. And also do the same here. Okay, so we want to create a dummy. So we're going to go to create helpers and uh, where is it? Helpers and dummy. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use this dummy to simulate the um, effect that someone has taken the uh, quilt here and has pulled it over the bed. So let's create a dummy like this and uh, let's position this so it's about the same position of uh, the quilt here. And with that, uh, with that create, let's press the N key. And by pressing the N key, it's going to bring up the shortcut to the uh, animation timeline. And we're going to use around 30 frames, which should be around one second. So let's go to the 30th frame right over here and put this on the final position to where we want this to be. So maybe all the way to the other side of the bed. And then I'm just going to jump back to the uh, 15 over here. And let's just move this down. So basically what we get is this sort of swooping action. Okay, and we could uh, we could at this point also add the rotation. So what I mean is if we go back over here and we use this to drag all the way across, what's going to happen is it's going to grab these vertexes here and we're going to get some sort of weird de uh, deformation because it's not folding over at, uh, at 180 degrees. Uh, angle. So let's move this to around 15. And uh, first of all, let's push this up. So we got this up and then over um, uh, appearance here. And then let's take this. I'm going to press the A key for the angle snaps and I'm going to rotate this 90. So you see this is 90 and then take this over here. Right to the last frame and rotate this by 90 again. So basically what we have is something like this. So we're going to take it and then we're going to fold it all the way over. All right. Now, 
you could, if you want to at this point, open up the uh, curves editor and uh, start playing around with uh, some of these values here and uh, making these a little nicer. Um, but uh, I think I'm just going to leave these how they are for now. Um, it doesn't really, it's, I'm not really too interested in uh, making this animation more fine tuned because all I'm really interested in here is the uh, final effect here. Okay, so this is what we have. So we have the uh, dummy, which is now moving uh, over into a 180, uh, rotating 180 degrees and moving to the final position in which we want the covers to end its uh, simulation. So let's select the um, the uh, quilt here or the covers or whatever you want to call this. I'm, just, I'm actually going to call this quilt. And let's go to modify and we're going to add a cloth modifier. So let's press the C key until we find cloth. Okay, now let's press the object properties and we want to add the objects in. So let's add the uh, bed, base and the floor and press add and let's press OK. And then I'm going to reopen this and we're going to set up the simulation here. Now, the reason I pressed OK and then reopened is there seems to be a bug in my version of Max where uh, if I set up the, if I add the objects in and then set up the properties, it doesn't, it doesn't work. So. So let's select the floor and the bed base and we want to check this option here that says collision object. So it's going to be a collision and select the quilt and we choose cloth and then we can choose a preset. In my particular case, I'm going to go ahead and choose cotton and press OK. Now at this point, if we press simulate, we're going to start to see the simulation. So if I press simulate, we're going to see that the covers are now simulating with um, the rest of the scene. Now the problem here is that um, this is this part of the uh, quilt is not being pulled over here. So let's press cancel and uh, look at how we can fix that. So first of all, we need to erase the simulation. So we go back to zero. Okay, and let's look at setting up um, the uh, drag option here. So. Let's select the quilt with the quilt selected. Let's go to the cloth sub object menu and let's choose group. And for this, I'm going to press the T key to go to the top. And I'm going to select a few of these uh, vertexes here and we'll choose make group. I'm going to name this drag. Now, with that being named drag, what we need to do is we need to set this to be a drag group. So if we look here on the list, uh, we just see it says. Um, it says unsigned, so we need to set this to drag. So now you can see that this is now a drag object. And we need to set up the controller or the, the node that is going to control the drag option. So if we check node and then click the uh, the uh, dummy here and then go back to the perspective view and run the simulation again, you're going to see that we're going to get a slightly different effect. A different appearance. So now we press simulate and it's going to take a little longer to simulate uh, this time but you can see that actually now these uh, covers are being uh, the quilt is now being pulled over. Now you can see as the simulation is taking effect we have some issues where the cloth is not simulating uh, with itself properly. So let's press cancel and erase the simulation. So what we can do is we can enable the self collision and give this a high value. I'm going to say around two, one or two tends to be pretty good. But by increasing this, we're also going to increase the um, the time that it takes for the simulation to uh, complete. So let's press simulate and uh, let this simulate. And what I'm going to do back to at this point is I'm going to pause the video and uh, I'll come back once we have a, a significant part of the simulation complete. All right, so I've let the simulation go to around uh, 37 so you can see here what's going on so it jumps over and then flips over here now the animation hasn't settled and you can see here that this is sort of where it's ended and um, so what we can do is uh, is uh, continue the simulation and see what happens but I want to stop here to show you that because this is quite a thick um, object we're getting a lot of friction here. Okay, so we can modify the uh, properties to get a lower friction. So 
let's uh, look at doing that. So let's erase the simulation and go to object properties and select the quilt. And then we can see that we have all the options that we can modify here. The one that I'm interested in mostly, or the few options I'm interested in here is like the self friction. So let's maybe drop this down to 0.1. Uh, air resistance, uh, maybe we can drop this down to also maybe around 0.1. Uh, thickening, maybe 0.1. So we can change some of these options. Um, let's see, maybe the dampening we can increase to like 0.5 maybe. Uh, and then we've got options here for the UV stretching. So how much this will stretch. So maybe like 50. Might be pretty good for both of these. Uh, we've got bending. How much it's going to bend. We can change these. So we may need to change some of these options here. So let's press OK. And let's run the simulation again. This time I'm going to drop the self collision down to 1. Uh, just to give me a faster simulation. So I'm going to run the simulation and again, I'm going to pause and I'll see you once we have uh, uh, some new results. So we're back here and I had allowed the simulation to continue and uh, I just ended it around here, around 40 frames. As, it, as we can see, most of the animation had uh, completed by that point. Now, uh, what I'd also done is I'd run the simulation the first time and I kind of got a different uh, similar result sorry so I'd gone ahead and changed some of these options again so you can see that we have a bunch of uh, options that have been changed I changed the UMV bend which deals with how much uh, bending can occur uh, during the simulation we got the uh, UB curve and the VB curve which deals with how much of uh, of uh, how but basically how much the the, the curve or the, the stretching can occur during the initial simulation while the UV stretch uh, deals with how much the uh, curve or, or stretch that can happen when the cloth comes into contact with itself. So I dealt with uh, those and changed some of those things. I'd also changed some of the compression. So changing the compression values will mean that um, it, it will determine whether or not the uh, cloth is going to fold in on itself or, or if it's just going to um, collapse, for example. Uh, we change the shear, which um, is is basically going to deal with how much it's going to shear. Uh, we change. I change the uh, density here, so the higher with higher density we get, is we're going to simulate something more similar to uh, uh, Demon, and the lower values we're going to get something close to uh, Silk. Now, as this is quite a thick object, you would think that the density is a little higher, but I set this quite low because I want the um, the simulation of the cloth to appear as if it's a little lighter than what it originally is. Then we then I change the dampening, which is basically going to give us like a sludgy effect. Uh, it's going to make it look, I guess, a little more flimsy. Uh, the uh, but the higher this value, the higher this value is going to simulate a higher uh, density uh, cloth here. Then we have some uh, thickness. You can see I set the thickness to zero. Uh, we change the repulsion, we change the air uh, resistance or how resistant this is to the air. I go ahead and change the dynamic friction, which deals with how much uh, friction will happen um, when the cloth interacts with itself during the simulation. Then we have the static friction, which is how much friction is between the cloth and the collision objects. Uh, we have the self friction, which is the friction between, again, between the, the cloth and, uh, and itself. Uh, then we, I then I changed some of the UV scalings and some of the, the depth and so on and so forth. So uh, these other values are not really too important, just mainly these uh, these uh, uh, ones right here. Anyway, after doing that, we ended up with something that looks like this. So if we run the simulation, we can see that we get uh, a pretty nice uh, animation here. So. Once we've done that, let's just hide this for a moment and choose hide selection. So what we can do now is we can collapse this entire animation. So we can right click and convert this to an Ezwell Poly. And uh, by doing so, we get something that looks like this. Now, what we want to do is um, we want to look at how we can take this and bring this into uh, Unreal. Now, 
if, for example, we just want to use this for, uh, the, for the purposes of just rendering here in Max, what we could do is we could take this and we could add a turbo smooth and get something that looks really nice and, and really smooth, just like so. But what we want to do is we want to take this and we want to push this out to Unreal. So, uh, first of all, we need to look at, see, we can see right here we have these flat edges and we want to get rid of those. And this is uh, why we're going to add that turbo smooth back on. So we add this back on over here. You see now we have these nice smooth edges. And all the time we're making these modifications, we're actually retaining the original uh, UV space. Uh, but on top of this, we want to add a uh, multi-res. So let's press the M key and go down to multi-res and we can choose generate. And once that's generated, what we can then do is set the vertex percentage. Now I'm going to go with maybe around 15% here. And I can convert this to an Esbo Poly. Okay. And so what we get now is a much lower resolution uh, model um, that has been highly tessellated. But we also retain the original UVs here. So if we add our UV on top and we open this up. You can see that actually we, we have uh, retained those, uh, those uh, UVs and it's just basically changed the topology for us. So from this point, we could then simply add or layer over um, some uh, textures. Now, there is one last thing that uh, I would like to show you that we can also do is if we, let's just collapse this back down to an edible poly. If we take the uh, vertex here and then we look under self, uh, soft selection, sorry, and we start to select some of these. What we can do is we can change the uh, fall off, and uh, so we get a bigger and smaller uh, fall off here. And what this basically allows us to do is this going to allow us to softly move these around here. So if we want to manipulate this to get something that looks a little more, uh, a little more artistically pleasing, but we don't want to keep running through the simulation over and over again, this is something we can also do. This is particularly useful, for example, if we have, say, just a corner like this, and we just want to move this up and out and, and in either that direction just to cut out any of the uh, intersections that may happen with the mesh below. So instead of running the simulation, you know, 20, 30 times to try and uh, work out the the issues with uh, the collision, why, why, for example, the object below is uh, is uh, protruding from here, we can simply just fix that really simply with um, the soft selection. So with that being said, um, I'm going to stop the video here. This is about it for now. The rest of uh, the rest of what you would need to do is basically comes down to uh, texturing this and then and then inputting this into a reel. And once you do that you'd have something that looks like this. So you can see here that this is just one of those slight issues that I didn't fix, um, but we could fix that soft selection. But once you've done that, you have uh, something that looks like this, and you can import this and set up your material. So if I just open up the material so you can see here, you can see that all I, all I really have is just a very basic uh, material. So this is all, all I have to set this up. I just have a color uh, multiplied by a Fresnel, and then that's being added to the base texture, which is also being multiplied by a slightly various, uh, slightly different color to uh, this original red. And these are set as parameters, and we multiply this by some texture coordinates and add some normals, and you can go ahead and add these basic parameters of metallic, specular, and roughness if you want to uh, change that. Uh, inside the master material and we basically just end up with something like this. So with that being said, that is the end of uh, this uh, tutorial. I'd like to thank you for watching and until next time, bye bye for now.